on your wrist of plain giant. The following video is broadcasting live, and thank you for being my studio audience. Thank you for hitting thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. What up and welcome back. It's your girl Jane, the blindness Jane, and we got some syrup to get into. Come on in, everyone. I have been waiting to talk to y'all again, okay? I really have. I couldn't wait to make another video to kind of create some balance. The last video was heavy as hell, okay? And I do just want to say thank you all so much for your support and all of your supportive and uplifting words, as that was very difficult for me to share in that last video. Uh, but it felt so good to get it out. It felt so good to take my power back. And it feels very freeing for me to not have to worry about um, lies or, or just anything being held over my head. Somebody trying to threaten me with um, releasing lies about me and, and my family that just is not true. So I feel so much better now that I got that off my chest. Y'all see how I got my wig split, okay? It's been a long time. Since I had my hair done, I got my hair done. Y'all know I did my nails last week. So I'm feeling cute, okay? I'm feeling very cute. I'm feeling very beautiful. And I hope that y'all are having an amazing week. Happy hump day. Come on in, hit thumbs up on my bus. I'm here to pick y'all up. I'm picking y'all up twice tonight. We got two shows scheduled. Already got the thumbnail. Already got the title. Already got the description box. So ain't gonna be no delay, okay? We gonna have a good time this evening. So, um, if you haven't already hit the subscribe button, definitely make sure you do so. And if you want to make sure you don't miss the second bus ride that we have for this evening, make sure you hit the notification bell. And thank y'all for 8,000 subscribers. It was literally five days ago. I thanked y'all for 7,000. And now we at 8.25. Y'all are dope. I see a lot of my old stickies, a lot of my old sticky squad is finding me again. And let me tell you how grateful I am for you all, okay? So get comfortable on the bus. I'm doing all this talking with my hands because I got my nails done and I'm taking the camera out of focus, but that's okay. That's okay. Come on in. Let me know what y'all having for dinner in the chat, okay? Because I'm having some stuff from the air fryer. Let's talk about what y'all are having for dinner as y'all load in. Y'all read the title. Y'all already know what we are going to be discussing this evening, okay? We are talking about Wendy Williams, her brother out and her, Kelvin Hunter, and said a little something, something. Is his name Kevin? Is his name Kelvin? Debate about it down below, because I see before the bus even got pulled off, we had people in the chat debating about his name. So um, we're going to get into that and child Radio Shack back in the news. How? How? Why is Radio Shack back in the news? <laughs> a lot of people are like, damn, didn't they go out of business decades ago? They, they sure did. They was always going out of business. So I've got the latest syrup on what Radio Shack is up to. And baby, when I tell you it's going to blow your mouth and cat back blue, I mean that. Okay. And I also got some history about Radio Shack and how and why they kept going out of business. Because, you know. You know, I always bring it all. So I tell you, things are always sticky in Hollywood and in real life. Shout out to all 103 of us who are here in the live chat. Again, when you ride my bus, it is free. It is free to donate and pay your fare by hitting that thumbs up. Cash apps and super chats are welcome. They are not mandatory, but I do definitely appreciate them. So if you broke, if this ain't your payday, hit that thumbs up button and that's how you can pay for free. Okay, so... Let's get ready for takeoff. This is going to be a good show. And the next show is going to be even better. Well, you know, I'll leave that up for y'all to decide. Drop them pancakes and let's go. Let's get ready to take this bus off. The plane is Jane. This is one of my favorite comments here. She says, I loves me some black. And she said, loves me some <laughs> black news. She says, is it just me? Or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out? All right, I see some people talking about what they're eating in the chat. I see chicken and broccoli. I see black beans and Greek salad. Naturally, Madison said, I ain't ate dinner yet. I'm probably just going to go to bed. So you're going to have hopes, thoughts, and dreams for dinner. That's okay. I do that for lunch sometimes because, you know what I'm saying, it just be too busy at work, you know? But nonetheless, let's get into it, okay? 
Make sure you got your mental health and your invisible problems in check. And shout out to all of my new subscribers. And before I get into breaking down today's topics and viral events, this is another reminder, a shameless reminder, to hit that damn thumbs up button. Otherwise, I'm going to pull a bus over and we can fight. Okay? So we know Wendy Williams has been on the steady decline. And honestly, it has been so sad to see. Ooh, Nigerian stew. That sounds good. That sounds good. <clears throat> It has been really sad to see all that Wendy Williams is going through. I'm talking from her family issues, to her marital issues, to her health issues, to her finance issues, to her career issues. I mean, like you name it, Wendy is going through it. And it hurts. It hurts to see that Wendy is definitely shady and I've been pretty critical of her. However, I, I, I say this all the time as a black woman. In the entertainment industry, a male-dominated industry, whether it be between radio and syndicated television, that is a male-dominated industry. And it's male-dominated, and it's definitely not dominated by Black. So for Wendy to have been successful on the radio for well over a decade and to seamlessly cross over onto television, it was it, it's definitely history, despite how shady she can be. She definitely charted and created her own um, her own path in a sense, right? She did it different than Oprah, although Oprah is someone she looked up to, which I think is moderately apparent. Um, however, it has been just so mind blowing to see the way the show has come crumbling down. I mean, you talking, you can't find Wendy's YouTube right now because it's gone. And baby, when I tell you, I know people like to laugh and joke when YouTube channels get deleted, but let me tell you one person who won't be laughing and joke when the YouTube get deleted. <laughs> As a sister who got her YouTube channel deleted at 102,000 subscribers, there was nothing funny about that. <laughs> nothing. But her YouTube channel, the Wendy Williams Show YouTube is gone. Okay? The Wendy Williams, the Wendy, at Wendy Show Instagram, which is was Wendy Williams' official show Instagram, gone. The Facebook page, gone. Like, what's going on? Now, some people have been doing some digging and they found that, no, the channel isn't deleted because they've got former links that they might have saved or sent to someone that they tried to click on. And it didn't say that the channel was terminated. It said that the page or the video was on private. So it's it's difficult to really understand. Are, are they going to wipe the channel? That's a lot of memories. I mean, Wendy on that syndicated TV show in that purple chair for years you mean to tell me as fans we can't even go back and look at all all of the shady moments good clips best clips good bad and different you know so it's difficult to really understand why is it private if it's private why is it deleted if it's deleted what are we trying to work out on the back end with with that bar mercury to really understand what's going on with wendy williams and and, and all of her publications we get it she might not have owned the show but for you to snatch all of the, those years of memories off, it, it's definitely got to be painful to see. Oh, Jaded Nerd's in the building? Shout out to Jaded Nerd in the building. What is going on, Jaded Nerd? So let's get into what Wendy Williams' brother had to say. And then I'm literally combing with a fine, with a fine tooth comb. I'm combing through. I'm combing through her ex-husband, Kelvin. Hunter, Kevin Hunter, whatever you want to call him. I'm combing through his Instagram and I, I found a little something that he said too that I found to be very peculiar, okay? So if you haven't hit thumbs up already, do it. And yeah, I'm going to keep saying it because I'm going to keep saying it because I'm giving you all a lot of entertainment, a lot of energy, and I look good while I do it. So God damn it, hit that damn button. It's free. But I do want to get into what Wendy Williams, her brother can be annoying sometimes. We're going to listen to his 21-minute video. Luckily, he does speak kind of slow and spaced out. So listening to it on two times speed, it really doesn't even sound too much sped up. But it's a 21-minute video. We're going to listen on two times speed so we can only spend 10 minutes watching it. And I want to hear what you have to say and what you take from Wendy Williams' brother speaking out and what he's revealing revealing that he even lied about some things as it pertains to wendy and how she's doing he hasn't been honest with the public and you know wendy and her brother they have definitely had their share of issues there was a point in time when wendy literally sat on her show and said listen tommy her brother's name is tommy tommy williams she said listen tommy if you don't stop i have all the receipts and i'm gonna out you right now and when he's when she said out you it meant exactly the way it sounds, okay? 
We talking about a closet. That's what we talk about. That is what Wendy threatened him with a while ago. So her and her brother have definitely had, you know, some situations. Situations will arise. So yeah, they had some situations and I guess they got over those situations, but I'm not sure who Wendy Williams is or is not letting in. Better yet, I am, but we're going to wait to reveal that towards the end of the show, okay? So, hey, Fior, I see you in the chat. Let's get into what Wendy's brother, Tommy Williams, has to say, because he is, he's on YouTube all the time talking, using Wendy Williams' name. Every video he does, he puts Wendy Williams' name first. He lets everyone know that, hey, this is my sister. And the thing about it is, look, I, I do enjoy looking at siblings because it's like you can... You can really tell that they're related. I mean, especially when he smiled. They all got the same teeth. Matter of fact, Tommy Williams went live with his father the other day, and I was watching. And when all of them smile, all of them the same shade, same complexion, same teeth, they all look the goddamn going same. So I do find that to be pretty, um, pretty interesting, right? But it definitely seems like Tommy is um, looking to take some of the shine from Wendy, which I can admit with me following with Tommy, he was trying to do that before she was even on the decline. But nonetheless, let me know what your thoughts are and what you are getting from what Wendy Williams' brother has to say about his lack of honesty as he used to frequently speak on Wendy's situation. Okay, let's take a listen. See, it, hold on. Let, let me let me just say this. <laughs> Look, I'm I'm reading the body language and everything from the beginning. You know his energy and everything from the very beginning. It just gave. Let me give a dramatic moment. Let's let's. <laughs> they some dramatic people. See, Wendy's dramatic, okay. but she's a woman, right? <laughs> so it works because she's extra. But Tommy is just. So extra to me, but okay. Okay. So, um, hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, whoever's watching. Good day. Hi. Um, this is a, this is, uh, this is Tommy Williams. Um, the youngest member of the Williams family. And uh, proud to say I'm the brother of Wendy, Wendy Williams. In my caption um, or title, I had all hail the queen, Wendy Williams, all hail the queen. Um, heavy, heavy title for a heavy position um, because many people refer to Wendy as the queen and um, that could be empowering or it could be empowering um, or it can be um, rather destructive. Um, I've known Wendy for 54 years, that's my life. And um, She's a great sister, always has been. Um, very heartfelt, very endearing, very passionate. Um, but over the years, I feel as though she's been very bogged down. She's been bogged down with something called fame. There's other factors that we can touch on, but um, for now I'll hit fame. I was leaving it under wraps, but my intention is to, um, to write. Um, we have a father who's a consummate writer and um, I enjoy putting my thoughts on paper. Not really, should I say. I'm a little ahead of myself. I'm not going to bullshit you. Um, I just like expressing myself. And okay. I fear for a bully. Okay. I don't like bullies. I don't like to be around bullies. I applaud people who, who snuff out bullies and their wrath of destruction, which most bullies do. Um, but I um, actually tried to jot down some bullets. So if you occasionally see me peer over here, I was going to say I was going to try to be as natural as possible. But I try to be as organic and as real as possible too, which has been why it's been so difficult for me to um, hold this channel and elevate this channel for so long. You know, I started this channel to um, to bring about awareness of, you know, COVID as I got COVID you know, a few years ago and uh, had it pretty badly. I'm saying I was on the high end of the spectrum. And, uh, and then the loss of our mother hit me. And that was the biggest um, pain that I felt in all my time. So I started this channel, which just started as Tommy Williams. And now it's going into the Tommy Williams show because it, it made sense and it is more or less a show. I like to bring in different components and have moving parts. And now I have my dad involved. So let me get this straight, Tommy. Tommy, Tommy, hold on. Let me, Tommy, let me say something to you real quick. Before you finish, Tommy, because Tommy, I... What is it that you want to talk to the world about? 
You started this based off of Rona 19, right? Um, you had to call it the Tommy Williams show. You couldn't have called it your type of male perspective or the topics that you're going to be talking. You don't even know what the hell you're going to be talking about. But the nerve of you to try to, and I've always sensed the clout chasing this, the clout chaser in you. I'm, I'm the Tommy Williams show. You're never going to be Wendy. You're never going to be Wendy. Stop it. Yes, you look just like your sister. Your sister looks just like you. But you're never going to be Wendy. Stop this shit. I like, I like expressing myself. No, I don't. I want to be, no, I don't. Look, look at you, 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 this little setup here. Tommy. All right, Tommy. I'm, I'm gonna call it the Tommy Williams show. I don't give a shit if Wendy drops dead tomorrow. You will never be Wendy. And you will never be able to take your sister's place. You just don't have the charisma. You don't. But all right, Tommy, <laughs> keep telling us what you done lied about. Cause what you, what you lie about? Untrustworthy, yeah. All this happened. Just seemed appropriate. <clears throat> um, all hail the queen. <laughs> well, um, and I go back over because I just have my bullets. But um, I just don't want to get sidetracked because I can get very winded, folks. And I'm not trying to, you know, create um, a situation where um, that I don't intend on, you know, backing up or, or discussing at this time. And back to my writing ability and, and you know, my, my appreciation of sharing my thoughts and things, I do plan on putting out a publication. And I'm actually working on things now, but it's not all surrounding Wendy, it's surrounding Tommy and my life. Um, but, you know, different people and, and, and circumstances factor and they do permeate throughout the, the course of my piece that I'm planning on putting out. Um, I just want to start with, um, I just want to start with fame. Um, and I jotted down a couple of things and I, I wrote down, um, fame is to be um, respected. That's what I feel. Fame is to be respected, folks. It's also to be feared. And most important, I feel as though fame should be valued. And this is as a sibling of a celebrity um, who's been spanning her career over 30 years. And um, so I feel qualified to speak on fame as it relates to a sibling or a person in the family of a famous person. Um, if, if all these things um, take place, you know, and the person who's famous respects the fame, fears the pain and values the fame, I feel as though that person, not should be, but I would find that person to be admired, appreciated, applauded, because fame could destroy you. And also, um, we, can, um, we can learn from that person. So that person can kind of educate people on different levels of fame. Um, so it's testy. Um, I just wanted to go ahead and preface my whole you know, conversation with myself because I don't even, I'm not looking for comments. I don't have my comment button up. So if you're putting comments in at the moment, you know, we table them and I'll try to get back to them a little bit later, perhaps. But right now, this is for me as, um, you know, mental health is real. Maryland homeowners, if you're tired of paying too much money for electricity, have a history of paying your bills on time, then you- I watched the video, um, or it was sent to me actually yesterday. And as I'm going and um, <clears throat> doing my, my regular thing that I do, which is pro Wendy, pro Williams, love life, <laughs> right? Positive vibes. Another day to make it right. All those things that I live by, right? And I will stand by those words and all those phrases. I stand here, you know, not to go ahead and let out confusion or, or back away from what I've already put out, but to lean on those things, but to add more because now I have more clarity. Now I have a direction. Now I have a decision to make. And so the decision I decided to make was to be real, be honest with myself, you know, and the, the more honest I am with myself, the better I feel. Um, the video came out and I am very supportive of my family and my sister because this is all about Wendy. I'm very supportive of Wendy. So I tried to um, to keep things under wraps in terms of her um, her health. Tommy, what is all this noise in the background? Your sister would never. What is all this noise in the background? It sounds like somebody in the background stacking up the old VHS tapes and shit that they never return to Blockbuster and Blockbuster shut down before Blockbuster could ask for their money back. What's going on? What's all, did somebody run a water in the background? God damn it, wasn't this some important stuff you wanted to tell us about your sister? This is a Tommy Williams show and you can't even just clear the background noise. We're not asking you to have a whole professional set with a purple chair and all that because, again, you would never be Wendy. But what's going on? Sick of it. Somebody said, why does he sound like that? Because he's on, he, he's sped up. Because I, I, I just can't sit here all night listening to Tommy's foolishness. So I put it on 1.75 and I, I just slowed it down to 1.5 speed just in case some people feel like it's a little too fast. But he's so long-winded that I just can't. She is fighting. She is struggling. She is working her way back to being Wendy. No, she is not the Wendy that we all knew. No, she's not. And it's very sad, very heart-wrenching, very disappointing. It's very frustrating. 
um, because you know when you find somebody in your family who you want to help, you want to help, but they refuse your help. They denounce any type of you know accusation of them being different or in need of assistance and want to grab your hand. You know it's difficult. You feel powerless, and that's how I felt for the past couple of years. Um, it's not about me. Um, it's never been about me. Because if it was about me, then I would have been honest a long time ago, and I would have just watched the ratings go, and, and who cares, and, it's, and just put it out there. It's going to do itself. But I knew that Wendy wasn't in a position to get out in front of a camera, and I've always tried to tell her to stay in the shadows, that I've chosen this path to get out here and speak to people, namely to, um, to, to keep my sanity, to keep my mental health while mourning the loss of my mother, while dealing with pandemic, and while working through everyday life and the ups and downs. Um, so yes, I am very supportive of Wendy, but I've always kept it very surfacey and shied away from the realities of Wendy's condition. But now that she went ahead and put the video out and did exactly what I had prescribed for her not to do, and many others, um, I feel it necessary for me to help me out, to take that last sandbag off the side of the hot air balloon, um, to be real with myself. And along with myself, I know that I brought a lot of people along and fed them and fed them and fed them things that weren't the case. And now that Wendy has come out and spoken her truth, not really that the words, it's not the content that was the truth, but the physical, the image, the sound, that's her truth. That's where she's at. And, um, and I feel as though it's time for me to be out here. I, um, I know that Wendy spoke about her future goals. You know, I'm concerned. I'm concerned because, you know, after having been in a marriage and, you know, and, and, and uh, have had battled, you know, not battled, but gone through divorce, which isn't unprecedented, you know, I can understand with her pain and things, but, you know, that's not the crux of the whole situation. Her health is the situation. The fact that she needs to be away from people who are going to do her wrong, that's the situation. The fact that family's all down here in South Florida and Wendy's up there in New York, and we all want to be there. I know, I would just speak for myself. I want to be there badly, you know, but I'm not brought in. And it's not because Wendy and I aren't in good space, because we are, but mentally, she's not on board. Oppositionally, she doesn't want me near because she realizes that I'm there to help and that I might have some validity to a lot of things that I'm trying to push on her. And so therefore she pushes me away, right? So, um, if I were to go up and say, hey, the podcast sounds great. Wow, when's it gonna start? Oh my gosh, that sounds super. Then that would kind of, you know, that would open her up because there's that fame, right? There's that fame, you know, the recognition. And oh uh, yeah, you know, I am that girl. I am that person with the power. You know, I can do this, you know. She doesn't allow herself to look in at herself as she has any situations going on. And that could be a very despairing situation. And, um, and that's the sadness of it all but it brings validity to the fact that I remain vigilant and must remain vigilant and keep an eye on the realities of the Nerdy Wells, the people who just wanna come around and, and suck and come around and, and, and get up. Opportunities for real, um, while she's not prepared to be all that we know she can be. Well, I believe that, you know, in life, you have to be the best you can be. And the best you can be begins with understanding yourself and understanding the potential that you have. And Wendy's reached, I would say, a great piece of potential if she was to self. And I'm not Wendy, but if I looked at all that she's done, but I was with her. See, that's the crazy thing. From day one, when she used to come in my room and she said it in a movie, I say it on my platform and that's what it is. She said it in books. It started with a conversation. Wendy used to come in my room and talk to me and interview me. And I used to sit there and give her the time and whatever. And I was only eight years old. Oh my gosh. But she was a believer in herself. She's followed every dream that I can recall, you know, in terms of her wanting to creep to the top of her own private success ladder. Yeah. So I don't want her to step back out. I don't want her to get back out there on a podcast and do all these things that she's doing right now because she's not equipped. She's not equipped to, to, to get back on that rung that she was on prior to all this happening, let alone climb and get to the next level. So until that happens, I'd rather her stay in the backdrop. And one of my intentions on doing this video is to hope that it gets into it. You ain't trying to stay on the backdrop. You have always been, always been trying to steal her shine. And I'm talking before she was on the decline. So, I mean, I totally understand her needing to sit down now, right? And to, and to take care of her health. 
But buddy, yeah, I... Wendy's ear and into her head so that she realizes that maybe she could try to prove me wrong. Oh, he doesn't think I'm the best. He doesn't think I'm equipped. No, I don't. I don't. And it saddens me. And as I tell Wendy sometimes, you know, what hurts me the most is to say, I feel sorry for somebody, you know, especially a person of that magnitude. Wendy could blow my, you know, if this were my career, which it's not, she would be able to blow my head, head clear off, right? Long as you know. She could blow it clear off. Long as you know. <laughs> quite, late, quite frankly, I, I got the, I had a better perspective on Wendy's ability to pull and, 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 and the strength that she had when she addressed me when I came out and spoke about um, my mom's passing. That was my indicator for Tommy. Because I know my Wendy, she would, if she was at her A game, she wouldn't even give me the time of day. She wouldn't even shine a glimmer of light on what I had to say. That's the queen I remember. That's the girl I know. That's what I expected. But when she came out and rattled off all kinds of, you know, different nonsensical things and, you know, challenged me and all that stuff. And not even just for a day, but the following day went out and did it again. I knew that she, was, she had some things going on, you know. <coughs> And it wasn't to this degree, but it did throw a red flag up. That's why I was quick to go ahead and apologize, quick to be concerned and quick to have her back because a true family member has one another's back and they'll do what they need to do to protect <laughs> that person. And that's what I did. I made the choice to protect and I will continue to protect. Tommy, tell your man or woman back there to stop coughing. Tell them to stop. Why are they even in the room running water? And what you sitting in the, the, the corner of the kitchen? Because we heard water running and, and shit. Stop it. Well, you know, when I, when I say these things, I, I go through so much. I try to put some bullets down, folks. I'm sorry I'm going over here off to the side. Sure. You know, I'm not organized like this. I try, folks. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't even try. I, I just, for those people who watch me each day, you know that I, I do the very best I can to try to hold this stuff together. But I have lots of fun with you all. But I, this is something that <coughs> I was fearful of my coming on because uh -huh. I was very, very upset. I was very disappointed. Very angry <laughs> with Wendy's choice on coming out and doing what she did. She seems to be focused on all the wrong stuff, talking about adventure. And who would hold a camera up? Who, who would be the camera operator to videotape a person sounding like that, acting like that, and knowing their platform that once was in social media? You know? Yeah, she can get a podcast going right away on my friend's show. And I've told her. I said, yeah, there's no doubt that you can get a podcast going. You can get mad viewers, too. You can get them all, Wendy. But what kind of show do you want it to be? I mean, it'd be a circus show where people just come on and just watch and say, oh, look at her now. And look at her then. Oh, wow. Ooh, what happened? You know? Yeah. That could be that kind of show and you'll get viewers all day. And invite it on everybody's couch to talk about it. Right? But is that what you want? Is that what the family needs? So... You know, Tommy, you could have at least scheduled this around your night because your night nurse is there setting up right now. We can hear it. I just th this is just not even it. And the fact of the matter is you used to kind of talk down on Wendy's abilities when she was well. And I ain't going to stop saying it because I remember it. There's not a video you have done. Here, here's what I need y'all to realize. We, we almost at the end of, of, of his rambling. Somebody in the comments said he don't look like he need to be on camera either. <laughs> Every video that's and I, and I click on it as soon as we done this video. Every video he's done, he starts it with Wendy Williams. The title of every video, he could be talking about golfing or swimming in the pool. He's going to put Wendy Williams in the beginning of the title and talk about whatever else, trying to get whatever leftover clout that his sister got left over. See, before when she was doing well, it was only a teeny bit of clout left off and just getting traction off of her name. Now that she's really not doing well, he's trying to capitalize off of the people who are still thirsty to listen to some sort of a Williams talk. But Tommy, it ain't you. It's not you. I, I just don't understand how you can never come on here and talk about and, and, and title your videos appropriate to what you're talking about. It's pathetic. And you you weren't supportive of your system when she was doing well. Stop the shit. But th th let's finish this up because I'm tired. You know, and I'll strike the last part because the family's not necessary. The family's all good. Like we were, everybody's engaged and doing what we need to do and progressing in life and doing what we need to do with each day. We're securing the bag. We're securing the bag at every step. But we're not going to win the war without our soldier on board. We're not. We could win a battle, but we're not going to win the war without Wendy. So I guess the last thing that I have on here that I want to say is prayer. Night nurse, giving them a look. I, uh, 
Oh, he having a little moment. Hold on, y'all. Let's all. Oh, really appreciate. Oh, okay, let's see. I really oh. appreciate. Oh. He can do it with each day. We're securing the bag. We're securing the bag at every step. But we're not going to win the war without our soldier on board. We're not. We could win a battle, but we're not going to win the war without Wendy. So I guess the last thing that I have on here that I want to say is prayer. I. Uh, Y'all know when Wendy go to cry, she say, eh, eh, eh. "That's his little version of." Eh, eh, I'm giving you guys emotion. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not funny. It's not funny. <clears throat> I really appreciate, I really appreciate if you all would pray for Wendy and consider her life, consider her journey, consider her strength. And I thank you. You all take care and God bless. Thanks for watching. Bye. It's hard to describe. Well, all right then, Tommy. I'm glad you got that out. I'm glad we could witness you getting that out. Well, you know, at one point I wanted to interview you, Tommy, but at this point, I just wanted to interview you for the sake of views. I ain't even, I ain't, I ain't even gonna play with you like that. I, I just wanted to get some views up off of you the way you wanted to get some views up off your sister. But at this point, clearly I done blew it, right? Because I done blew your whistle. And that's okay. I'll be damned if I come on here and not keep it real because I want a damn interview from you. Forget it. Forget it. <laughs> I said, Tommy wept. Look, every video... He's ever published on this man, John. Wendy, what, he, he don't even talk about Wendy in all these videos. Sometimes he just talk about his sister for the heck of relevancy. Other than that, every single video on here, Wendy Williams, look, 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 look at this. Wendy Williams' brother speaks out. Child, why don't you use the name you were given? God damn. You be going to Google to find these pictures of your sister so you can come on here and talk and get some views. And you still be getting, you know what I'm saying? 700 views, 200 views out by the pool. Wendy Williams, brother speaks out. Live your life. You wasn't talking about Wendy here. What's going on? It's giving clout chaser, Tommy. What's this face, Tommy? What's going on? Oh, no, Tommy. The people in the comments said you look like a turtle, con <laughs> Tommy. They said, you, they said you look like a tortoise. Oh, man. Dang, Tommy. I'm sorry. Look, Wendy Williams, you got this. That's just too much. You know what? He, he, he gets on my everlasting nerve. And that's just that. What are y'all thoughts about this? As we painfully sat through, somebody came through and they said, I am a pain channel member. I demand you put it back on two times speed. Yeah, because Tommy is very long-winded. See me, I might always have a lot to say, but I'm never saying it slow because I, I just, I, I can't, I will forget my thought if I'm speaking at a slow pace. Some people ask me to talk slower. I'm sorry, I can't. You need to listen a little bit faster or maybe you need to put it on 0.75 speed. Tommy is long and drawn out and he ain't even got nothing to say. See, I got a lot to say and I talk fast, but I'm always giving you a ton of information that you're getting from it, okay? What are your thoughts about what Tommy got to say? And basically the synopsis here, is that he hasn't been honest with us. He's been covering for his sister is what he's saying. And saying, I've been pretending she's well and lying that she's well and she's not well. And so now I'm gonna just go ahead and say it. And she won't, you know, she won't listen to me because she knows I have her best interest at heart and she denies that there is even a problem. And so I can't do anything. What I found to be interesting about that because you know she's under new management so to speak right but this this guy that she was um in love with right there were rumors that they were dating at some point and this new manager that she's got it you know she she used to have a crush on him they used to you know Wendy says a lot of stuff to get the media going she really does and when she was saying these things before and and all hugged up with this guy his name is is um what's his name Will Selby Will Selby is his name does he have her best interest? He's a, 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 um, a, a mid-age, probably looking around about my age or maybe like six, seven years older, black guy. I don't know if he got her best interest. It, it damn sure doesn't seem like it, right? So Tommy's saying, listen, Wendy won't listen to me. 
but she's clearly under new management, right? And thank you so much for the super chat. I see someone sent a ten dollar super chat. Dang, where to go? Okay, here it is. Thank you so much, Dr. Nikki Proctor Baldwin, PhD. Let me know when to come back from the bushes. I'm trying to weep, but I got nothing. Look, it's a lot. Let's get into what Kelvin Hunter had to say. Okay, this is a comment that I found while I was perusing his Instagram. Okay, so I'm on his Instagram, right? And you can see his name is, let me make it a little larger for you. His name is Kelvin Hunter on Instagram. Okay. There's somebody that came down in the, um, in the comments, right? They said, Kelvin, please tell them to stop exploiting Wendy Williams. Remember I was telling y'all they were exploiting her. Seeing these many interviews is sad. Can you put an end to this? Help your ex-wife. Hashtag save Wendy Williams. Calvin says, I tried. She has family and a new manager. Stay blessed. What does that mean to y'all? Right? I tried helping her, but she has family and a new manager. And due to the fact that he put family and a new manager kind of in the same like parenthesis, right? I tried. She's got these people. We already know the management is not doing her well. It's not doing her well. Whether they're trying to do her well or they're trying to do her dirty, it doesn't matter. They're not doing her well. So it seems like, right, what I get from it anyway is that Kelvin tried and he's not able to really do much for Wendy because the family and management are in the way. I feel like potentially Kelvin and, and Tommy could have possibly had some sort of power struggle with trying to care for her. And I don't know if you've ever had somebody in your family who has been really ill and needs help. And you've got two or more people who are like, no, I'm going to be the head honcho taking care of this sick family member. And there's another person. No, I'm going to be the person taking care. And it's just always this nasty back and forth. And the real person that's suffering is the person who needs help, who is sickly, who is, you know, able, you know, able or whatever the case is, disabled, handicapped, whatever it is they need. So it seems that Kelvin is saying, listen, her family and her management, apparently they got it. I tried. I can't do anything. That's what I'm getting from Kelvin's comment. So listen, listen, make up forever say, y'all hit that like button, please. Yes. Thank you so much for hitting that like button. There's 211 of us here. There are 156 likes. Y'all make sure to keep that love going. But th that's what I'm getting from it. He's not able to get past Wendy's family or her management to really give the help that he can give or knows how to give uh, when it comes to uh, assisting Wendy Williams in her business endeavors. Did he mishandle her heart and her feelings? Absolutely. Clearly, he had a whole side baby on her in front of the world. But when it comes to her business dealings, he is somebody that swoons in and does what he can do to, to, to clean up a mess, whether it be a mess that's Wendy's fault or people that are just like, you know, not doing her right. For example, the, the way they ended the show, the way they said they were throwing the purple chair out, the way that they didn't even bother to include Wendy on the final farewell episode. Calvin stepped up and said, listen, this is pathetic that y'all are doing her this way that you wouldn't even consider having her to be a part. This is very unceremonious. I think that was the word he used. But um, and, and then there was another time when she first went live and shared that her money was all sewn up at Wells Fargo. He came up and he did a whole literally, I think that live was a little over an hour long, really just talking about his struggles and really trying to do the best that he could do for her business wife. What's his motive? Who knows, right? Because of course, he's always good. The more money Wendy makes, the more money Calvin will ultimately have. So does he really have her best interest at heart or does he have his pockets at heart? Whatever the case is, whatever his incentive is, he does typically try to stand up and and, and do something about her uh, being railroaded. But it seems that he really, uh, you know, is has not been able to. Um, but it also seems like her family isn't able. <laughs> Somebody said Tommy wanted that chair of wigs. I think Tommy did want the daggone chair of wigs. <laughs> so, um. You know, it, it, it could be a matter of both. There's several people in the chat saying, I, I think he had her best interest in his pockets at heart. You know, it, it could definitely be both. I mean, don't forget, he still got a baby to raise with, with Sharina Hudson. They had that baby not too long ago. So he still got bills that need to be paid too. And I remember when he bought that, what was it? Was it a Rolls Royce or something? He bought some expensive car with Wendy's money. 
And Wendy had that car towed so fast and came on the show and said, mm, with my money, I don't think so. I said, damn. So, you know, you know, what's really going on? Luckily, Wendy did get her chair. Luckily, Wendy did get her chair. We saw she was sitting in it um, on the TMZ episode. But look, Tommy is a mess. Calvin, you know, he's been a mess. Has he done anything recently to be a mess? I would say no, right? Um, but look, this, th this whole situation with Wendy Williams is so disheartening to see. It's like every day we turn around, we see some mess from Wendy Williams that just is like, dang, they really doing her dirty to that, like to that extent. Yeah. Yeah. They absolutely are. And it's, it's really sad to see. It really, really is. So look, I know y'all didn't already hit the thumbs up button, right? But let me know if you are on the bus right now watching this live or if you're chasing the bus and catching the replay, what are your thoughts about this situation as it pertains to Tommy saying, I wasn't honest with y'all before. I was covering for my sister, but now I'm going to come out and call us it. Like, can we even trust you now? I didn't trust you beforehand. I, I, I was just being kind of gentle with my commentary before because I wanted an interview. But at this point, I don't care. I see you trying to take Wendy's spot. And the answer is hell no. The answer is hell no. It's never going to happen. Yeah, he bought Sharina and him a car. And <laughs> Wendy had that thing told, okay? <sighs> mm. it, it, it's, it's just a mess. It's a mess. So I know you're wondering about the second half of my title, right? Because I see this didn't make a lot of headlines. I noticed this story that we're about to get into, right? About this ancient store. When I say ancient, I do mean ancient. We talk about this ancient store and y'all probably like, what, like what's going on Radio Shack? We ain't heard about them since like uh, flip phones, you know? Um, yeah, we need to get into this because uh, when I tell you they are off the hook, like they are off the meat racks. Like they are wilding out. And I want to get into that for a moment. So if you haven't already taken a moment, please make sure you subscribe to the backup channel. The backup channel is the third link down below in the description box, okay? We're almost at 500 subs over there. We had a little 8.25 over here. So I appreciate y'all. Make sure y'all show the backup channel some love because we're going to be over there sometime soon. And shout out to all 215 of us right now on this bus. I love y'all. Now, let's talk about Radio Shack. When I tell you it's going to blow your muffy cat back blue, when I tell you either your jaw going to be on the floor, you're going to be laughing, you're going to be crying tears. I'm telling you, I was at work. When I came across what Radio Shack got going on, <laughs> and I couldn't keep it together. I literally had to walk out and go to the bathroom because I just couldn't believe they was wilding out like that. I couldn't believe it. So hit thumbs up and let's get into the next story, shall we? Hey, roll us on your wrist of plain giant. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> let's talk about Radio Shack. Like, like, like what's going on? We know of so many, okay? So, 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 so many. And I see there's a lot of stuff going on with the memberships and people um, upgrading and stuff like that. Thank you so much to Ms. Parker. And thank you so much to Xquasia. I can't see it on the back end for StreamYard for some reason, but I can see it on my other screens. I don't know why StreamYard doesn't let you see it. And I saw Fun to Be Blonde did one earlier too. So thank you so much. Now let's talk about Radio Shack because they have been tripping. You know. There have been so many of these different businesses. Yeah, Radio Shack. So many of these businesses trying to go viral lately. You know, got people running their social media in a way that be like, huh? You know, you remember when Wendy's and McDonald's was beefing, Wendy's and Burger King was beefing, and they was tweeting some real, real spicy non-corporate things, okay? From their pages. Child, when I tell you Radio Shack and take the, the took the cake, I don't know if I mean in a good way, but when I tell you, I don't know what 17 to 23 year old that just learned how to cuss is running Radio Shack's page. Oh, baby, it is going down. Are you ready? Are you ready for this? Because when I tell you they get X-rated and say whatever they want to say out their mouth. Oh, they do. Oh, they absolutely do. I'm trying to figure out, oh, Lord, they done said more since the last time I done been here. Five minutes ago, what they said? Radio Shack. I just found out my girl has been cheating on me. Damn, bro. 
Is a is it Amy from Michigan? Yeah, how'd you know that? Lucky guess. Child, they is they out of pocket. Let me let me try to find the ones that were most. Oh my God. What's this say? Wang stop. I'm craving you inside of me. New hairstyle dropped. She got the Voldemort in that thing. What else is going on? Because hold on. They said something about use my ears as handlebars earlier today. Oh my gosh. Not if you bitch slap someone in the comment section, but no one is there to see it. Doesn't make a sound. I mean, they've been saying anything out of their mouth. Salute to all the veterans and active duty men and women who provide me the luxury of talking shit on Twitter freely from the comfort of my mommy's basement. America, baby. Look at this. Look at this. They said, I don't care what anyone said. Lizzo was fine as fuck. What's up, girl? Lizzo said, I'll give you my number if you stream about damn time in all your stores. Lizzo, I see you trying to capitalize off a moment, but baby, what stores? It's only about one and a half stores left. What's going on? But trust me, it gets worse. It gets worse, okay? And in between all of their crazy tweets, they're promoting NFTs, child. Look at this. NFTs. Woke up feeling rough, but I remembered. I put strippers kids through college last night we all good due to inflation six inches is now nine inches just stole some girls food at chipotle thanks katie chow some people think beer is nasty and so am i after 15 it's a lot it's a lot going on here anyone that thinks radio shag twitter is wild and just remember we watched a courtroom full of people Talk about Amber Heard taking a dump in Captain Jack Sparrow's bed on live TV. A thing about yesterday, I see whole tits on TikTok daily. And I got put on Twitter parole for talking about marrying squirters. Elon Musk, when we making moves, fam. The new generation of Twitter is here. And I'm going to champion the fuck out of it for you, G. Radio Shack woke up on January 30th. And chose violence. They said all black Air Force Ones laced up and ready to go. If you know, you know more than people. And y'all know what y'all know what all black Air Force Ones mean. If if you decide that you putting on your all black forces and you leaving out the house, you you, you ready to fight. So I, uh, it's uh, Shaq intern here. I wanted to take a second to reflect on my post. If you're expecting me to say in my wildest dreams, I never thought that tweet would go viral and to apologize. But I did because I know that shit was fire as fuck. No, we didn't get hacked. And no, I'm not fired. Buckle up, bitch. I know you. Okay. Look, he said, if you find a squirter, marry her. It's not a fake page. This page has been in existence since 2000. And yeah, on July 2nd, they said, sit on my face and use my ears as handlebars. This bit page has been here since 2009. This is literally Radio Shack's official Twitter. That's what it is. Damn, not Randallstown, Maryland. It, it did used to be a Radio Shack up there. Dang. No, they not coming all up in Baltimore with this slander or what the hell. Look, it says my vibrator plugs into the wall, but I literally brought a new one that takes batteries solely so I could support Radio Shack. They said good morning. Chow. My girl still hasn't come back from Miami, chow. <laughs> Not trolling Best Buy. Hey, Best Buy support. I was just on a customer service call with one of your reps named Candace. She was so rude. Can we do anything about this? Taking the second half of an edible after feeling nothing from the first half is always a bad idea. This chocolate bar got me out here fighting for my life. Any interaction with this tweet will be considered for a chance to win catching these motherfucking radio hands. <laughs> hey, what? Did I hear the story about Kel and Nick? Yes, and I'm working on an exclusive interview right now because, you know, I did interview Kel Mitchell's ex-wife before. So we've been um, in conversation since yesterday. 
Let's see. Okay, so I don't know if you remember Nutter Butter went crazy um, on June 27th. They said, in is for the way you nut at me. They caught all this flack, and they didn't apologize. They came out with another quirky tweet. Here go Radio Shack pulling up. I think this is a typo, Nutter Butter. Switch at to N. So, you know, if you come down here and you do switch the at to N, it says N is for the way you nutting me. Girl, I said, let's go to the bush. Let's, because cause this, I don't know if this is a Negro or a Caucasoid or whatever this is running this page, but they're sick and we need to go to the bush. It was gone. Let me just go in the bush and weep. Let me just go in the bush and weep. I just have to go in the bush and weep. Really. I, I don't understand. I swear to God, I don't understand. Anyone remember those cool robots we used to sell called <laughs> called I Ladies? They said, we don't care, nor do we like Radio Shack. So the thing is, they said I Ladies, right? See, I caught this joke right away. Anyone remember those cool robots we used to call we used to sell called I ladies. You were supposed to say, what are I ladies? And they was both, they was fin to say the response is I ladies nuts cross your face. But anyway, am I childish for knowing this joke off rip? I don't think so. These are the simple jokes that existed. See, look, I ladies balls on your face. Ooh, see, these are the jokes from middle school. Look, 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 look. See, it, it ain't even got as bad. I'm telling you, it has not got that bad yet. They said, hey, Molly Cyrus, you up? Retweet if you punch the... Oh, okay, I get this one. I'm with this one because, you know, I hate pedophiles. I drag a pedophile in a heartbeat. Shout out to the way I drag R. Kelly any chance I get. Okay. Anyone remember? Okay. I think the only person who's serviced more customers than us over the year is Jake Paul's girlfriend. I want y'all to see, oh, hold on, here, here, here it is. Crazy that in today's society, for instance, a man has sex with tons of women, he's labeled as a player or a top G. But then when a woman goes out and has sex with thousands of men, we call her Lil Pump's mom. Look, they said weekend essentials are batteries in a slippery when wet sign. Here's this, this, this white woman here. She says, thanks to Radio Shack's two-day shipping, my CoffeeZilla vibrator batteries arrived just in time since now I'm too scared to have sex until menopause. Radio Shack says, have fun with your new vibrator batteries, Rachel. Wish I could be there too. Like, what is going on? <laughs> What is going on? Why are they going so buck wild? And of course, in between all this mess, they tweeting crypto. Now look at this. Look at this right here. This is a picture of, if you know, you know. But um, it says, last night was a movie. When upload Pornhub. I know they did not put Wendy's, right? They put the Wendy's logo on the face of someone who's clearly about to accept all five of these cocks and then put the radio shack symbol with the sunglasses on top of it. Like what is going on? This is a gangbang set up and anybody who knows, knows. It's it, like, 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 like what's going on? Sometimes I feel like I should just do more coke with Elon Musk. They said, how many batteries does it take to keep your account running? They said the same amount of batteries to keep your mom's vibrator powered. They said Radio Shack is out of business, right? They said the only thing we're out of is fucks to give. It's just a lot. Like what, what is going on? Ah, radio silence from the radio lagging entertainment. I'm returning all of those gift cards my aunt gave me in the second grade. Radio Shack said, cool. When you see her, say what's up from my dirty shack and the boys. Shell, not dirty shack and the boys. Oh my God, what is this? 
Wendy's tweeted and says, when the sky's the limit, conquer the sky. Check out our first VR platformer, Sunrise in the City Horizon Worlds. Radio Shack said, if a dumpster burger is eight fifty, I expect your metaverse to look better than this. Lick my balls, Wendy. You know what? <laughs> uh, my thing is like, what are they trying to accomplish with this? Are they trying to like get more sales? Like, what is going on? Like, what do they think this is going to solve? They said, snap on these nuts. They said, even Wendy's wouldn't want you, Wendy. Oh, because this person's name is Wendy. Oh, I have mercy. Here's the first time that they posted the picture of this gangbang. They said, NFT New York City after party was lit. I said, <laughs> oh, what is going on? and they still going with this every morning just kidding I like snapping y'all's necks motherfuckers they are so out of pocket like where did they get off they said somebody bought the twitter you know what at this point it does seem like maybe somebody bought the uh, the, the twitter I just look the men, men versus women population ratio this explains why I'm single it's a lot. Look, if you get any free time, if later on tonight, after you're done watching the second bus ride, okay, go ahead. It, it, if you are a person who participates in the libations of, of, of rolling things up and smoking that tree, I don't smoke that tree. I'm just saying, if y'all do, take your ass over to Radio Shack Twitter and just scroll and laugh your ass off. Because there's there's something going on over here. But I want to get into some information because it's like, yo, Radio Shack, like, like, like for real, what are you trying? What are you trying to accomplish? Y'all know Radio Shack has been out of business for the longest time. It's sometimes they be thinking they in business, but they but they not. They not in business. <laughs> like what what is going on? So here's some information that I have on Radio Shack. Radio Shack first filed bankruptcy in 2015. I think that they think that these social media antics are going to help them, right? But I don't think that they will. I don't think that they will. Here's a look at some data, right? We get into some, 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 some data about Radio Shack, right? Get this image, bring this over here. Boom, let y'all see. Not the site can't be reached. Hold on there. Copy the image. All right. So this is Radio Shack and, and, and how they've been operating, right? We, we got into the laughs and giggles. Well, let's talk about why y'all been doing so trash. You see, y'all can keep us laughing on Twitter, but that's not going to like net to any sales. And I was over on y'all website and, and still it's, it's, it's nothing special. Y'all got these boring, dull, bland um, websites still like marketing tactics. They filed bankruptcy in the beginning of 2015. That enabled them to start closing a lot of stores. Um, at that time, they closed about 1,800 stores. Immediately afterwards, a company followed up called Standard General. They purchased Radio Shack, right? For some reason, they thought they were going to be able to do better with Radio Shack than Radio Shack had done for themselves. Literally, early 2017, immediately after, they filed for bankruptcy again. They closed another 1,000 stores. <laughs> they said maybe they're trying to go out with a gangbang, okay? That could be it. My whole thing is like, look, Radio Shack, like this, this is just not it. Like Radio Shack was late to the party with a lot of stuff, which is why they did so bad. So everyone's been selling things online for literally 25 years now. Radio Shack didn't start retailing online until 15 years ago. They were a whole decade behind. They've always just had these, these outdated um, means to how they did business. The thing about Radio Shack that I remember from elementary and middle school, because I got my first cell phone, it was a Nokia was it the fifth grade? It was either the fifth grade or the sixth grade. When, when cell phones first started popping, 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 right? We went from regular Nokia to legit flip phones, right? And even the car phones our parents used to use. Thank God I ain't old enough to have, a, have to use no, no big old cordless looking <laughs> crazy phone. But Radio Shack always did so bad. Best Buy always beat them. Hell, Circuit City always beat them. Because they tried to capitalize off of the craze of cell phones and selling cell phones and selling cell phone plans. 
it's it, it was lucrative, especially at that time when cell phones first like took off. We're talking a mobile phone that you could take outside your car. But in order to sell those plants, it takes a lot of time to really speak to every customer to sell those phones. Now, Radio Shack, the, the name of the goddamn company is Radio Shack. So they first became known for selling radios and specific electronics around radios and sound systems. And then they kind of branched out a teeny bit after that. But they started losing their, their it factor when they became so um, so focused on, hyper-focused on selling those phones. You walk into any store and you purchase a brand new cell phone right now, it's going to take the representative 45 minutes to an hour and a half to even talk to you to get the thing set up, to figure out what plan you want and all this other stuff. So people were coming in there for at least what they knew Radio Shack for. At the very least, nobody nobody be banging with Radio Shack. But if they did bang with Radio Shack, pun intended, it was for electronics, random wires, headphones, radios, whatever the case is, cordless phone, alarm clock, whatever. They were so busy not being able to service their initial established customer of basic and fundamental electronics because they were so bent on selling the cell phone. And that didn't last for a long time. Can you walk into Best Buy right now and purchase a cell phone from T-Mobile or Sprint? Yeah. But at the time when Radio Shack was doing all that stuff, you didn't have individual um, cell phone um, kiosks or stands or locations. Now they've got a Verizon store you can walk in, a T-Mobile store you can walk in, a Sprint stone, uh, store you can walk in, um, you know, Cricket, Metro PCS, you name it, it's there. So they were trying to capitalize on something that really wasn't, you know, it, it, it's not why what, what their initial target customer was. And they lost a lot of people. And then, okay, so you started off this business selling your electronics, alarm clocks, radios, whatever, your, your red, white, and yellow cords from the back of the TV. Then you spend all this intention on cell phones. Then that craze dies down because these, um, you know, these carriers decide we just going to open our own stores and cut the middleman out. The middleman was a radio shack. Now you ain't selling no phones because the stores want to keep all their profit and people want to go straight to the stores to get a cheaper deal. And you've already, you know, your customer service went all the way down the tubes. Everyone hated being in Radio Shack at that time because you couldn't get any service if you weren't buying a cell phone. They've always just had bad business, either bad or outdated businesses. They didn't have terrible customer service at first, but they had an outdated approach to how they approached the market and their consumer. And then by the time they try and catch up, it's too late. See, they hopped on the cell phone craze immediately. It was something that was brand new. It's just like any company that was able to sell computers when computers and, and when laptops first started came out, it was brand new. But, you know, Radio Shack, they lost a lot. <laughs> they lost a lot of their people. A lot of their people. Thank you so much, Kimmy. I appreciate it. So, you know, Radio Shack has always just been a day late. And a matter of fact, a week, a month, a year late in the dollar short again. Most of us have been th buying things online. All of these, these stores and Walmarts, Targets, whatever, they've been online retailing for 25 years. Anybody selling the electronics, Circuit City, Best Buy, whatever, even though Circuit City is obsolete, right? But still, everyone's been selling stuff online, especially as it uh, pertains to electronics for 25 years. Radio Shack felt like, oh, no, we still want to do this in-person thing. They didn't know how to house and, and to do an in, in online market until 10 years later. It's too late. You missed the wave. And, you know, I named the two companies who purchased Radio Shack after they filed their first bankruptcy, but it continues to happen. Company after company after company continues to buy the company and then they go bankrupt and then they sell it and they buy it, and then, you know, because then they, you know, let me tell you, I would only buy Radio Shack for $15. You ain't catching more than $28 out of me for no Radio Shack. Like, because there's no business there. Amazon, another one, took them out. Took them out. So look, Radio Shack, I don't know what you're trying to do. If we sit here and we look at your numbers from 2008, right? And this is in millions of dollars, right? So in 2008, they were um, grossing $189.4 million. In 2009, 205. 2010, uh, $206 million, right? So they were never really on the steady increase. And then you get to the decrease. Then from 2010 to 2011, they went down from $206 million to $72 million to negative. Now we're in the red, $139 million, negative $400 million. It's only going to get worse. <laughs> it's only going to get worse. 
<laughs> they said, I always thought Radio Shack was run by the FBI. They always want your name and shit. Well, I mean, well, you know, well, you never know. I, could the feds be hiding behind a faulty business that is never able to, you know, fully sustain themselves? I mean, you know, information comes a dime a dozen. And for some really old school people who maybe are just, you know, you, you, you find some people of a particular age who just very, they're very hesitant to try new stores and new locations. They're used to what they used to and they have their routines. Maybe they still have some folks of a particular age who are shopping there. But look, us millennials and even the Gen X's and the Gen Z's and so on and so forth, ain't nobody, nobody dealing with no damn Radio Shack. Everything in there is dusty. You got the alarm clocks from, um, you know, 2015 up in there. You know what I'm saying? And for $25 at that, I can go to Target and get me a little modern looking thing for, you know, 11 bucks. Walmart for seven bucks. Like, I'm not doing that radio shit. I'm not doing that radio shit. They said radio on Eve. It's the truth. They said my mom still writes checks. Same here. Same here. Th this is what kills me about people of a particular age. I'm trying to stop saying old people, but y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Because when people say I'm of a particular age, you already know what that means. They just don't want to say I'm old. Um, you know, what gets me about people that write checks, my grandmother and my mother and all of them, they'd be like, uh, you know, they'll write a check and they'll put it in the mail to pay a bill because they're opposed to paying it online. Oh, I, I, I'm not putting my information in online because I, I don't want my information just, just floating out there for anybody to get on the internet. Meanwhile, they're sending a check in the mail with the account routing number and their name and address on the check. And they don't think that that's their information floating out there. <laughs> um, you know, these, 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 these mailmen and male women, you know, they rip these envelopes open and steal cash and steal information from there too, right? Do you think that that check Ain't going through nobody's hands. I don't trust the internet. Oh, so you trust the mail folk? I, I, I'm not trying to come at And listen, if you work for USPS, you know, I mean, if you work for the Postal Service, I'm not coming at you, but everybody's not trustworthy there. <laughs> just, I don't get you just sending out a piece of paper. You don't know when it's going to get there, if it's going to get there with your legit information. You could, It's easier to change your card number rather than changing your account and your routing number information. Or they, if you got to shut down an account because somebody got your account number and your route number, you got to redo all your finances. If you had things that were autom that are going to be automatically debited out of your account, whether it be your mortgage, your phone bill, what like. <laughs> it's, they said it's a boomer store. That's that's what it is. Toys R Us. They said I love to I have to write checks for my business. You know, I still have my checkbooks. If I had to write a check. I want to hand it to you in person. But even so, it just feels dangerous. Writing checks feels very dangerous to me. Maybe it's just because I am, I'm a youngin, you know what I'm saying? I'm a millennial. Writing checks is dangerous as hell. You can change your debit card number in the blink of an eye and have your same account and the route number because you keep that sacred. I'm not tearing off a piece of paper. And, well, don't nobody lick stamps no more. I'm putting, I'm not doing that. No. Oh. <laughs> they said the boomers ain't finna like them tweets exactly who are you catering to <laughs> I do like the way that I, I do appreciate and really respect the way that people of a particular age used to balance their checkbook oh baby that's discipline right there I'm talking my mother used to pay for them groceries she would write that check she would subtract what the amount was from the back and they keep that little ledger and it be right and it'd be right. And if something's ever wrong with it, like, mm, my let just say, I'm like, y'all really do this math every time y'all spend something. This new generation would know nothing about that, especially doing it without a calculator or a phone right there. Every time you swipe your debit card to make a purchase, you subtract it from all the money that's in your account. It's too much work. It'd be too much work for this generation. I ain't gonna lie. Like, of course, I, I know what a ledger and stuff is, you know, I was, you know, but by the time I started working and making my own money, it was debit cards. It was a thing. Okay. So I didn't have to. That's too much. Okay. I, I, 
it's not even about spending too much money a day. It's just about the amount of transactions. You know, like that's just too much. <laughs> it's just too much. I bought a pack of forever stamps five years ago. So okay. And then penny stamps. It's a thing. It's a thing. I do enjoy vintage stuff from back in the day. But I also like laughing at it and clowning it too. Because I mean, I, I remember those days. I remember one time, I'm really telling on myself right now, right? <laughs> I'm so bad. I was in the third grade, right? And you know how they had the school store? Where you could buy like cool little pencils, cool little pencil sharpening. I'm talking like the flyest school supplies you can find. You can't find this stuff in Staples and Walmart and wherever they did, Kmart, wherever they did your damn school shopping, Montgomery Wards, whatever. Child, let me tell you something. I, my mother had this old expired checkbook. It was expired in the basement. Do you know I took a check out of there and wrote the check with my third grade handwriting and used a regular pencil and wrote that check for $7 at their school supply store. Signed my mother's name, right? Forged it with that pencil. You know, don't nobody write checks in pencil. Girl, I went to that school supply store. They called my mother so fast because they looked at it like, Jane, who gave you this check? I'm like, my mom, <laughs> my mother dug into my ass. <laughs> my mother dug into my ass. <laughs> so bad. The nerve of me to try and, I could have just asked her for $7 for my, you know, a little fly sharpener, fly cappy races and stuff. No, I wanted to go write a check in pencil. For seven dollars, <laughs> I learned my lesson. <laughs> I learned my. I ain't know. I ain't know. I thought I was. I thought I was being slick. I thought I was being slicker than slick, Cheryl. Okay. <laughs> they didn't even. I'm like, what? What's the matter? They got on the phone so fast. I'm like, what's going on? What's the problem? I just knew it was going to work. <laughs> I sure did. I'm telling on myself. Yeah, that's what happened. You know, I was punished for a minute. Okay. <laughs> In the third grade, really trying to do check frauds. <laughs> I'm glad I did it in the third grade and not, it was just $7. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> not me about to get a check fraud. Mm -mm. Play them games. Mm, luckily my mother ain't called a juvie it's like no they weren't finna take no third grade away for seven dollars with a check that would have never never cashed okay anyway that was a um <laughs> i did they was like who gave you this check my mother gave me that she <laughs> your mother know you got this check yeah i just knew i was doing a good job with that shit i just knew i was <laughs> They could have took that seven dollars. My mother would have looked at the copy of that check when she went up to the bank and when she noticed her ledger was seven dollars off. I'm like, oh, what is this? Oh, the school. Yeah, she she I I, I never did no shit like that again. I never did no shit like that again. <laughs> okay. Ever. Okay. <laughs> that, that's just that. But look, this 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 was a nice trip, y'all. This was a nice trip. Back down memory lane. <laughs> she had no business leaving them expired checks down there in the basement. Anyway, what they tell you to do when you got some expired documents, they tell you to shred them and throw them away. Why didn't my mother dispose of the checks? Huh? Huh? She didn't do her part. So, you know, trying to find a way to blame her somehow. It's like, no, it wasn't her fault. It was my fault. But still, she could have... <laughs> <laughs> a check and pencil look <laughs> that's what it was but look what are y'all thoughts what are y'all thoughts about this story what do you think Radio Shack is trying to do talking about put your put your put your what they say put your legs on my ears and ride them like they handlebars I'm like mm -mm, what's going on like why are y'all so uh-uh, what's going on? Like, I, I just, I don't understand what's going on Radio Shack. Now, hold on, I ain't look at this one. What's going on? 
He said at least he's spitting fat. Cringe all the way through. I am genuinely cringe all the way through. I am genuinely cringe all the way through. I am genuinely cringe all the way through. Who are you talking about? You're a simp and not funny. Hold this L. Oh, okay. Okay. What happened to that May 2nd one that y'all can see? I mean, um, their July 2nd one. That's the one I really want y'all to see. They must have deleted it. They must have deleted it, but I still got it here on my other screen. Okay. Um, Radio Shag is off the hook. I'm not sure what the hell they're trying to accomplish. I personally don't think that it's going to work. But hey, those are just my thoughts. I want to know what y'all thoughts are, Sticky. This this has been a pretty, you know what? I see it right here. July 2nd. Hold up. Mm -mm. See, because I got to show y'all this. Y'all got to know I'm not lying. Not lying at all. Mm -mm. Hold up. I want y'all to see it. Put it there. Copy address. Y'all see it? Sit on my face and use my ears as handlebars. I said, what is going on? What's going on? Are, are they like, how old do you think the person is behind this page? I'm not sure if they 17 or 23, but they can't be no older than 27 acting like this. <clears throat> they can't. <laughs> they, they, they can't possibly. So who knows? Their website does still work, although I'm telling you there's nothing lucrative about it. Everything on their website is cheaper at Walmart, almost the same price as Target, okay? It's just too much. It's just too god dang. They say 19 to 25. I think so too. They, they can't be no older than that, in my opinion. So I, I don't know what they're trying to accomplish. I don't think it's going to work, okay? Your net worth is still your net worth, which is nothing. You're always in the red. And look, that's just that, okay? <sighs> what are my final thoughts and unanswered questions about this situation in this story? Ultimately, you know, if this is a black person, if this is a black person behind this page, this is a sick Negro. It, it's just so out of pocket. It's so far out of pocket. I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to say, but it was an amazing laugh. Out of pocket for that shit. Way out of pocket. What do you gain from that? My final thoughts and unanswered questions. I don't have any. Stay prayed up, child. My final thought is roll you something good. Scroll down a page <clears throat> and let me know some of the funniest things y'all find. I scrolled as long as, not as long as I could, but as long as I really had the energy to. And um, I realized they've been doing this for a while, since way back in May. Okay. So um, they said there's way too many bro words. Yeah, possibly. Um, let me know your thoughts down below. I'm going to hop off of here, stickies. If you haven't already hit the thumbs up button, make sure you do so. Otherwise, I'm not letting you on the bus for the next show, which won't be too long from now, okay? Um, I'd appreciate it if you could go ahead and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the next bus. You know I've got to talk about. <laughs> you know I've got to talk about the girl, Tierra Matt. Yay, yay. I've got to talk about her. Why wouldn't I? Why shouldn't I? Why would I know y'all know I had some commentary. Now, shout out to everybody who checks the community tab. But some of y'all already, y'all already know what it is. Y'all already know. The shade room. Okay, I was wondering when the, the shade room was going to be posted. I've been reposted by the neighborhood talk. I've been reposted by the Jasmine brand. I'm like, when is the shade room going to be? The day came. Okay. Not only is Rhode Island Senator T.R. Max working for votes, but she's also pushing a sex ed bill to teach 6th through 12th grade students how to masturbate by adding comprehensive pleasure-based sex to school curriculums. Yeah, we're going to have to get into this. You know I got the information, right? You, you, you know I do my research before I come up on here. You know I do. You know I do. And I have a problem with her. It ain't just her wiggling them booty cheeks with the birthmark down at her butt. 
the birthmark definitely looking like a piece of poop. But, but, <laughs> pun intended, but we, we, we've got to talk. We've got to talk. I have some extensive things to say about her. I've got some things to say about Macy Gray and what she had to say recently. It's a lot going on. Is this what we doing now, America? America. Y'all know how Bernie Mac used to get upset and he'd be like, America. He'd look at you with his cocked eyes. America. Listen. Is, is this what we doing now, America? <laughs> is, is this what's going on? We got some things. We've got some things. I have quite a few stories and a great black news. But see, this was just like two topics, two neighborhoods we rolled through. But when I come back and pick y'all up on the next bus, we've got a full bus ride coming in. OK, so the black news bus is coming to pick y'all up. Y'all know the black news bus is just a ride, a stroll that we do on social media. And we talk about what's going on in the celebrity world, what's going on outside of the celebrity world and things affecting everyday black folk like you and me. And y'all know I always got to give y'all a little sprinkle, a dab of some black history because that's just how I roll. So we've got a really good show in store for you this evening. Um, y'all make sure to go eat y'all dinner. <clears throat> if you haven't already. Oh, it's really interesting. You mentioned sexualize, uh, sexualizing children. There was this girl in this red party city wig trying to argue me down all day <clears throat> about how and why children should be learning about masturbation in the sixth grade from their teachers because that's what this bill is about. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking too much. I need to be saving this for the show. But when I tell you this red crunchy ass wig was arguing with me all day, trying to tell me why kids need to be taught by their teachers the best ways to masturbate in schools. I drugged that wig so fucking bad all over Twitter because stop playing with me. Um, <clears throat> oh, oh, I did. Go to my Twitter. It, it's all up and down because I, I got tired of the shit. I tried to hold back on her. And, and she just kept coming at me. Then she, ow, you're spewing hate. But you've been calling me names all morning, calling me everything but a child of God. Don't, you're spewing hate. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. You're on my nerves. I blocked you off of my YouTube tab. She came on my community tab this morning with the same shit because I posted how the shade room posted me on a community tab. Here she come with her bullshit on the YouTube tab. <clears throat> I blocked her. I look up on Twitter. Here she is under the same tweet. Yeah, yeah. You're 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 sex negative because you don't want the kids to learn about. No, I don't think a sex a sixth grader needs to be learning about ways to masturbate from their teacher. I think that that should be an at home or self exploratory type of a thing. But listen, 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 listen. That part, I go check my Twitter. If you follow me on Twitter, you already know because I got tired of her shit. She called herself pulling up some data and shit. See, look, kids as young as two-year-olds masturbate. It's natural. I'm aware of that fucking statistic. I'm not stupid. But that doesn't mean that the sixth grade teachers should be telling them the best way to pleasure themselves at all. Any way to pleasure themselves. Fuck is wrong with you? These are the people thirsty to get young, impressionable minds in, in the center of their hands. And that's why I'll drag them every chance that I get. When warranted, she tried me. She tried me. She tried me. <laughs> it's too much. Let me know. I'm, I'm glad I got y'all warmed up to the topic already. I'm, I'm glad I got y'all warmed up already. Because when I tell y'all this situation had me hot, but I had to find the humor in her raggedy wigs and her $3 a month OnlyFans. Girl. You're shaming sex workers. No, I'm shaming your price. You're not even making four quarters a week beating them nipples together like that. And you over here talking to me about what kids should be learning about in school as it pertains to sex wise so they can end up like you? Showing it for free, damn near for free online, 10 cents a day? 10 cents a day? You arguing with me and I don't want to your damn bio and you got an OnlyFans for $3 a month. Then had a nerve to say, you're too simple-minded to understand. I I'm smarter than you. And you're too simple-minded to understand that I've got a sale going on, bitch, a sale? <laughs> and you're shaming sex workers. No, I don't have a problem with sex workers. You're a cheap ass hoe. That's what it is. <laughs> That's what it boils down to. I would say raise your price, but it sounds and it seems like you know your fucking worth. And you're only worth 75 fucking cents a week. 
three quarters a week, you bang them nipples together. But you're smarter than me. Okay, ma'am. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> it's a mess. It's a mess. <laughs> She's too simple minded. Okay. Okay. All right. She got me through my work day clowning her ass. You talked about my wig enough. Now I know you hate sex workers and you're 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 projecting your hate onto me. No, ma'am. No. No, ma'am. No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I know people that I don't even like on this very same app who would never charge 75 cents a week. Are you kidding me? I've got a sale. Bitch, I've seen your regular prices and it's just $5 a month. So you were working for five quarters a week. You put it down to three quarters a week, but you're arguing with me and you had a nerve to say, I know I'm smarter than you. Who the fuck gets online and says, I know I'm smarter than you because they don't agree about something. You sound like you're in the third grade and you're on a mission to prove something. Bitch, go bring them nipples together on OnlyFans and bring yourself in a couple more dollars and get some tips. That's what you need to do. And get the fuck out my mentions. Every tweet that I tweeted today, here she go with a, 10 more tweets in response. Bitch, leave me alone. I don't like you. I blocked you on YouTube and here you are over here. Follow me over here. You're a useless person. You're ignorant. I told her, I said, nice vocab though. She told me nice vocab. She's anti-intellectual. Bitch, what the fuck is an anti-intellectual? I said nice vocab. You're overwhelmed with all of these buzzwords that you try to put in every sentence that you formulate because you're a virtue signaler and you're not even using them in their proper context. So while I am impressed with your vocabulary, I wish that you would use them in the correct context. Now I tell you, nice vocab though. You're anti-intellectual, bitch. How am I anti-intellectual? Because I am intellectual, but there's no need for me to sit here and say I'm smarter or I'm more intellectual than you because it doesn't fucking matter. And there's no winning against you, wig. Detangle the wig. Release the wig. Mm-mm. Anti-intellectual. I said, this bitch at home all day making up words and problems that don't exist. Then she threw some data at me from the Mayo Clinic and I can't wait to rip that shit to shreds on the next show. Okay? <laughs> Child, she'll never get a real wig with them prices. She won't. She won't. <laughs> she was getting on my nerves. I was trying to keep it cool. I was trying to, I was trying so hard to keep that shit cool. And I was only responding to her seldom in the, in the mentions under the tweet until she, she keep retweet trying to put me on blast. So all eight of her followers, bitch. Okay. Now I'm going to retweet you and the wig and you got a nerve to have the other wigs that are dry and dehydrated in the back. And I can see them too. Stop it. Get the fuck offline. Back away from the Amazon and the party city wigs. Back away from the internet. And stop trying to use a shake and go for a year. A shake and go wig is good for one, two uses, weak tops. Here you are a year later with that same wig looking crazy. And instead of spending your time trying to figure out how to get more bang for your buck, you sitting here with a party city call. They want their wig back. They want it back. Then you're locked. Too much it's too much yes 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 i went in on her she she was she was she was she was she was being a gnat this morning she wouldn't go away i said okay she tweeted me twice she still wants to argue because i'm not feeling this fucking senator from rhode island i'm gonna ignore her every time i turn around here she is and she like tagging her friends in all right i told her i said it's clarence <laughs> i'm like get your cheap slower matter of fact Clarence Price slore ass out of my face. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Release the wig. You need to go repent. This is out of pocket. He <laughs> said, I just checked your tweets. Yeah, because, yeah, she did too much. Leave me alone. Fuck. Anyway. <laughs> y'all got me riled up. It's y'all. Y'all did it. Y'all did it. We should do a red wig emoji. I'm going to make some. I have room to make more of the special emojis. So, um, and I, I probably got room to make like five more. So, yeah. We're we, we going to make a red wig emoji. Because I kept, I kept saying, bye wig. All right, wig. Okay, wig. You don't agree with me, wig. Get out of here, wig. She kept testing me. 
And she kept moving the goalposts. No, ma'am. No, (laughs) ma'am. No. (laughs) This is how Tiara Mack stands act. They are unhinged, further unhinged than her. Okay? (laughs) All right, y'all. Let me get off here and go eat. Hopefully, I can be back by 11.30. I'm hoping I can be back by 11.30. Nine only fans and three goddamn quarters a week. Girl, 10 cents a day. The children in Africa get more. Girl, bye. 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 Let me get off of here. We're going to come back and do our show later on today. And this going to be lit. <laughs> Tracy said, Lord, I'm looking at your tweets now. Look. Look. <laughs> Listen, y'all make sure y'all say beautiful, black, and blessed. If you haven't already hit that dang one thumbs up button, make sure you do so. Thank you for watching. Thank you for checking the community tab. Thank you for 8,000 subscribers. Um, don't forget to do something relaxing today. Go ahead, eat your food, roll up what you need to roll up, pour what you need to pour. Let me know your thoughts on Radio Shack, Wendy Williams, her brother, Calvin Hunter, and all those other good things, okay? Make sure y'all subscribe and thumbs up or down, either way, I appreciate it. But be sure to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any, okay, of this trending topics, of this syrup, of me reading the bitch for filth, taking her back to school, okay? Drop some pancake emojis down below, and I'm gonna catch y'all in about an hour, okay? But that's it. If you want to catch more of my commentary on black culture or vital and trending information, be sure to subscribe by hitting that little circle in the middle of the screen, or I'll catch you in one of these rectangles to the right in another video. I'll see you there.